I'm Dave Goggins, the Vice President, filling in for Mary McGee, our uh, very capable president, who unfortunately sends her regrets she isn't able to join us tonight. Fortunately, we have a light agenda, so uh, hopefully she won't be missed too badly. Uh, that means uh, that you'll have to endure me for that much less time. Yeah, as goes planned, we'll be getting out a little on the early side tonight. I want to remind everyone that um, we have a newly, uh, uh, a newly revised, uh, streamlined uh, website, newer.org. Please visit that. You can see. Uh, uh, the most recent agendas uh, posted there and other useful information about meetings and how to get in contact with us. Uh, along that line, uh, I'd like to uh, encourage people um, uh, to come up with uh, any nominations or suggestions. We're going to be convening our nominating committee soon uh, to uh, handle the succession issue. Uh, our current president, Mary McGee's term, ends this fall and we'll need to have uh, an election to replace her. So I would encourage everyone um, to get involved if you know people who uh, you think are would be good or qualified to represent our community and, and participate uh, on the executive committee of Europe please uh, shoot us an email or speak to one of the officers after the meeting tonight and let us know also if you'd like to participate in the uh, the nominating committee uh, we welcome any and all volunteers to do that it's uh, it's pretty light lifting it's basically just um, identifying potential uh, neighbors from from the, from the community who we think might be uh, might be good to have uh, participate on the executive committee. Um, this, any successful organization uh, needs new lifeblood to uh, to keep it fresh with uh, ideas going forward. So, um, anybody has any ideas uh, or people that they like to nominate, please reach out to us. Uh, and along those lines, uh, when you visit our website, you'll notice that um, there's at least one reference to uh, membership dues. If you haven't contributed already for uh, calendar year 2018. You can do that here after the meeting tonight, or just go on to our website and uh, click on a button and do it electronically. So we thank you for, for your support. Questions? Go right ahead. Any date yet for the August party? Well, that's being uh, discussed uh, by the executive committee as to whether we're going to keep doing it in August. Uh, it was pushed into the fall last year because um, uh, the renovations that take place at the pilot house. Uh, we were considered because. Um, uh, we've got some flexibility and we want to maximize uh, attendance. We're thinking maybe September might be a better time than August to hold the, uh, um, to hold the annual uh, party. So if anyone has any feedback on that that they'd like to share with us, please let us know. If people have a strong preference for either, either month. So that's where things stand. But uh, again, uh, the budget for the party is uh, dictated by uh, the coffers uh, from our dues. So additional incentive to, uh, to maintain your membership. Any other questions? Great. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to our Parks and Open Spaces Chair, Robin Reed. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um, now that summer's here, there's a ton of things going on in all the parks uh, in the city, and there's way too many for me to list here, so I would encourage you to go to the Boston Parks Department website, um, and you can see the list of all the events and fitness classes that are going on all over the city. Um, Christopher Columbus Park, it is a city park, but there's also the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park that put on additional events. So I would encourage you to go to their website, focp.org, to see what they're planning for the summer. Um, and that includes an Independence Day celebration on Saturday, June 30th. Um, the Greenway also has things going on, uh, events and fitness classes as well. Um, Please check out their website, uh, too many to list again. Uh, speaking of the Greenway, the swings are back in the North End Parks. If you want to check those out, they're a lot of fun. Um, they, they work really hard to make sure that they can bring those back, so um, please take advantage of them. Um, and I, was all, I would also encourage you to check out the art, um, the, the neon art installation in the Wharf Districts. It's really fun and nostalgic, and uh, they, um, there's a lot of history there, so I would, I would encourage you to check that out. Um, let's see, on June 28th, the Mayor's Coffee for the North End is happening. It's at 9.30 a.m. in Christopher Columbus Park, rain or shine, so please come down and uh, see the Mayor. Uh, another event not in our neighborhood, but very close by, is uh, going to be a dog-themed sculptural um, exhibition in the Navy Shipyard. Uh, the opening party, and everyone's invited, including their dogs, is Thursday, June 21st, from 7 p.m. to sunset. Um, but that exhibition will be up until September 10th, and it's going to feature 
twenty eight foot high steel sculptures. So highly um, Regarding art in the parks, um, uh, I've been speaking with and working with the city muralist who is very interested in refreshing the murals in Cotillo Park. Uh, they've been fading and they're chipping and she has some great ideas. If anyone's interested in uh, providing feedback around that or finding what's going on, um, I'm forming an ad hoc uh, committee around that, so please contact me. You can get in touch with me through the website, um, and my email address is robynr at newrun.org, Robin R. Uh, and let's see, back in May, the Parks Department hosted their third and last community meeting to discuss, to discuss the uh, the design phase of the $4.6 million Langone and Cupolo Parks improvement projects. Um, they're going to start construction in spring 2019, and uh, the park will be fully open for use uh, in spring 2020. Uh, that meeting did not have many residents, and uh, in my opinion, it was a very uh, important discussion going on about whether they're going to replace the uh, grass with artificial turf or grass. Um, and if you have a, an opinion about that, I would encourage you to read about all of the proposals in Matt's blog in northendwaterfront.com and, uh, and let the city know about uh, how you feel about that, because I think that's an important thing to give feedback on to the city. Um, and one more thing that I think is really important is on uh, June 9th in the Boston Globe, there was an article about how Boston was going to uh, had a goal of planting 100,000 trees and how they fell incredibly short. They fell short by 96,000 trees. So they did plant uh, about 10,000, but they removed 6,000, so they only increased by 4,000, which is just Beautiful. Um, and I, I, the work of the Parks and Open Spaces Committee, we've been doing tree inventories and we've been building tree cages and we're trying to save the few trees that we have here in the North End. Um, we really don't have that many. Um, and I, I think it's really important to the health and um, uh, health of the community. Um, so the City Council is actually having a hearing. Uh, about the tree canopy on Monday, June 18th at 10 a.m. in the City Council Chambers. So, again, I would encourage you if you have an opinion about the trees in the city to come to that or let your city council know. Can I uh, just add one thing to that? Is that um, if you look at the climate change maps, the north end is one of the hottest areas in the city because we've lost our tree canopy and we've lost um, quite a few trees in the last few years and they haven't been replaced. They haven't been. Yeah, we really do need that. Yeah. And we've lost some really big old trees yeah. too. Yeah. So um, even if they could get them on their legs, much smaller trees. So um, yeah, the heat index in the north end is losing grass is not good either. That's right. What's that? Losing grass yeah. is not right. good either for that. Right. That uh, <clears throat> artificial turf um, <clears throat> soccer field is going to be hot. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's really. Sad if the sad if kids can't smell cut grass. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, my apologies. I neglected to uh, introduce uh, at the beginning of the meeting uh, the other executive team members. To my um, immediate right is Jen Crampton, our uh, very capable secretary, and uh, of course our treasurer Sue Benavides. Okay. Next, we're going to turn to uh, the chair of our zoning licensing and construction committee, uh, Victor Bronya. On the question of nominating committee, uh, unfortunately, the chair of the zoning license and the construction committee does not have a term. Means I go on forever. However, <laughs> it only seems that way. It only seems that way. It seems that way to me. If anyone is interested in being a co-chair, please let me know. Don't even go through the nominating committee. Just, <laughs> just let me know. Uh, and the other pre-report comment is on the uh, on the party. If it gets moved to September, it can't double as a birthday party for yeah, me. Right. right that's right, right. the past. That's a major consideration. But, but that's okay. It's not a major birthday. No. <laughs> so maybe when that comes, we can move it back to. Uh, it's seven or eight more years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, 
the Zoning License and Construction Committee report. And uh, at the May's ALC meeting, we had three items uh, that were discussed. Two of them are on today's uh, newer agenda for a vote. The third one was uh, 15 Snow Hill Street, and under the authority given to the executive committee by the, the vote of the membership two or three years ago, it was decided by the executive committee that that should be a no objection letter directly to the Board of Appeal uh, without going through a newer vote because um, it was to legalize an occupancy that had been going on for many years. Uh, it had been assessed as a four unit building but listed on the ISD uh, records as a three unit building. When they filed for a building permit to do some renovations that had nothing to do with increasing the number of units, uh, it was noted that the, uh, uh, the, the use was, was not legal, so uh, it was voted by the executive committee to send a no objection letter on that one. Um, what will be coming up at the uh, ZLC meeting in, uh, on June 26th is a, um, I guess I can say, contentious item. Um, it is the 198 Hanover Street address, which in fact is the address of the Charter Realty building that was once the, the Martin Yeti Liquor uh, building that runs between Hanover Street and Salem Street. Um, and the proposal is to put a Starbucks in the corner uh, where the ATM is now, that is the, the Hanover Street corner, and uh, put a, a branch of Citizens Bank in the center. The right hand bay has not been leased yet, uh, so there's no uh, application for work there. Um, the uh, zoning relief that's needed by Starbucks is a takeout license, which is a conditional use. And if anyone wants to be prepared in advance, I have uh, photoed some uh, uh, the three pages from the conditional use uh, description in the Boston Zoning Code. So you can pick them up uh, from me after the meeting. Otherwise, I'll have some at the ZLC meeting, which is going to be the 26th of June. Um, there's another, I don't know whether it would be controversial or not, um, a proposed tobacco shop at 87 Salem Street, which is one of the bays in the, uh, the, the former uh, the, 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 the former true value, yeah. And the uh, proposal is that there would be no smoking in the tobacco shop, that it would sell tobacco, sell uh, tobacco uh, accoutrements, including hookahs and, and the like. Uh, that is not yet on a CLC agenda because I haven't received notice that a uh, building permit has been filed in a uh, refusal letter issued. But when that happens, the NURA procedure kicks in and we will have it on a uh, ZLC committee agenda. Um, I think that's about it. If there are any questions, let me know. The smoke shop that wants to be there. Yes. Will they also be a marijuana smoke shop? <laughs> no. <laughs> let, let me... Uh, <laughs> you know, make the um, the email I received says, the applicant shall not sell, this sounds like it comes from a lease. Okay. So I, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Ken Rothman required this in the lease, but yeah. anyway, maybe not. I don't know, that's my guess. But let me read it. The applicant shall not sell any food products, any alcohol, wine, or beer, or marijuana, okay. and shall prohibit any smoking or consumption of any tobacco or other smoking materials on the leased premises okay. or within 25 feet of the leased premises. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Oh, I do have a question about that. Yes. Um, what did you say? Yeah. Um, so there was something about them doing long glass, or were they just selling glass? Um, that's part of what they may do there. <laughs> Sell it and um, 
Yeah, let me see if I can find that for you. Uh, well, it's no reason. Yeah, right. Thank you. And then you're wasting time. But when they describe what the, what would go on there with the the, the sale of these uh, materials, including the receptacles or whatever you call them, which would include glass and perhaps uh, instruction on blown glass. Well, that's quite a, uh, I mean, they wouldn't be able to do that for fire code. I, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I just, no. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a huge, you know, huge fire. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very hard. Let me read um, something else. A re retail store selling tobacco, flavored and otherwise, and tobacco-related accessories to adults in strict accordance with the rules established under the Massachusetts, under Massachusetts law and regulation, and under the regulations promulgated by the Boston Public Health Commission, Boston Tobacco Prevention and Control Program, at which, upon obtaining all necessary construction and safety permits, will open a glass blowing studio and glass object gallery. Hmm. <coughs> That's all I can tell you. We'll hear more about it yeah. when, they, uh, when they come to, uh, yeah. to New York to talk. But um, um, it, you should be the proprietor who's proposed to move into this space um, has another business, I think, somewhere outside the city. In Medford, is that right? Uh, farther out. Uh, but, but that, but Woburn, perhaps. Right, maybe that's right. But um, it's it's different from what he's proposing for the North End. He runs a uh, what's basically a hookah lounge where they serve cocktails and and where there's actual smoking on the premises, which is very different from the retail shop he's doing. He's playing open on Saturday. So. But you'll have a chance to question and vote. Great. Thank you, Victor.